Hi, TechCrunch. How are you? Hi. So we're honored to be the first one today. So um, I'm Daniel. This is Franz, and we're the founders of Lock8. OK? So let's get this show on the road. OK, so do you know how this feels? I'm sure that this has happened to a few of you before. How many times have you gone out and seen that your bike was either completely stolen or vandalized like this one? No lock is safe. Bicycle theft is a huge problem worldwide. It causes over 5.7 billion euros in stolen bicycles every year. And at least one bicycle is stolen in Europe every minute. I hope it's not yours. So bike security today, we have locks. There are some locks that are getting smarter, but I wouldn't really call them smart yet. Some, have, some are keyless locks, and some have tracking devices. But do we have anything that is truly smart? So we got a great team together and asked ourselves, how can we make a truly smart bicycle lock? So we decided that we needed all of these features. We needed an alarm that was triggered by sensors. We needed GPS tracking. We needed the lock to be self-powered. And we needed it to be keyless to top it all up. So we combined all of these things together. And this is lock -It. So you're seeing lock -It for the first time. It's got incredible technology in it. It's probably smarter than your smartphone. So what is inside lock -It? So we need the sensors. But before I bring out the sensors, I'm going to bring out the villains of bicycle theft. So this is what a bicycle thief might use to steal a bike. So what happens if they try to use a saw or a power drill? We've got a vibration switch for that, a hammer or something to impact gyro accelerometer. Maybe a blower torch or freeze off lock eight won't work. We've got a temperature sensor. And then maybe a drill or some other way to get inside. We've got a light sensor. So if they try to get inside, we'll know really early. Then also, we made a smart cable. So if they cut the cable, the alarm is triggered immediately. And finally, if for some reason your bike actually gets stolen, then we can track it with a GPS tracker. So let's go to the live demo and show you how Locky works. So let me get my phone. Which one? <coughs> yeah. Great. OK. So um, you can see my phone here now. So I'm on the app. It shows that my lock is in Berlin. So um, can I have the, uh, the bike placed uh, in the rack, please? So this is lock eight. It's nice. It's simple. So if we take the cable and we plug the cable into one of the, uh, the holes in lock eight. OK. Great. OK, so now I can lock my lock eight. So let's say that uh, a thief comes in, and he wants to uh, tamper with it. So there's our thief. <laughs> So he's, he's got his nice little saw. And let's see what happens. OK, so he doesn't know what's going on because, OK, so it's completely alarmed. So the thief won't want to go. Oh, and guess what happened just now? I got an alert. Uh, can I switch the, there we go, uh, the alert. So I just got an alert at this very moment. I don't know why that's going on. Tamper detected, your bike might be a risk. So immediately, Lockheed sent a push notification to my phone, alerting me that there was a problem. OK? So very quickly, I'll just show uh, a few features of the app. So we know that it's, I'm going to unlock it because I don't want to trigger the alarm again. And we've got quite a few features in here. So you can offer your bike to rent. You can check the settings and change the vibration sensitivity, offer your, your lock for Facebook. Um, there's, uh, and we offer remote subscriptions so that it can work with you uh, whenever you're away. So it works with Bluetooth. But it also works with GSM. So let's go back to uh, the features of, of Lock8. OK. So um, if I have the presentation back, there we go. OK. 
So Lockheed is truly for connected mobility. It's the first solution that integrates bikes, your bike, not just a bike that some city decided that they wanted, to you and a network of other bikes. So you can share with Lock8, you can rent other bikes with Lock8, so the app is perfectly well triggered for this. And best of all, we can integrate it in a whole city and really disrupt what connected mobility is about with bicycles. So yeah, eco meets disruption and it meets social. So that's what Lock8 provides for you and we hope that you like it. And then, just so you see a little more of our renders that we love to have in videos, this is Lock8, and we're launching this very moment. So today we launch on Kickstarter. So you can actually go on Kickstarter right now and pre-order a Lock8. This very moment, you can now pre-order a Lock8. Thank you so much. Okay, that was uh, Lock8. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, judges, do you have any questions to kick off? Who would like to go first? Who's the big, who's a keen cyclist? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go ahead, Reshma. Um, you, didn't, you didn't talk at all about sort of your distribution strategy. I mean, kind of to scale big, have you had thoughts around how you'll distribute this and get it out to market? Yeah. Franz, would you like to take this? So basically, can you hear me? So basically, we're going to distribute um, now online, but what the B2C model we can start right now, we can distribute online, but what eventually we're going to do from next year on is we will distribute B2B. We've talked with bike rentals, we will go to city by city. We've talked to bike rentals and everybody said, look, if I have 10 bicycles, 20 bicycles, I only have one lock eight, I'm connected, I'm on your platform. And everyone was willing to be on our platform because they haven't had such a platform up to now. It's scalable without docking stations, so we can go to hostels, hotels, bike rentals, bike shops, everyone in the city who has a bike for rent, we put them up on one platform and connect the entire city. Do you have a vendor, sort of a management platform to this as well? Yes. So is your business model around selling the locks or selling the services that power the lock? It's both. We will be selling the locks, that is one revenue stream. Then we have a subscription model for certain services that you can activate where you stream data where you need data and thirdly we will take a commission for the bikes that you will be renting through our platform so if I, if I would make you choose one revenue model to start with which one would you choose sorry if I would make you choose one revenue model to start with which one would you choose of the three well to start with we'll, we've already chosen we're going on Kickstarter so we're going to be to see first we're going to sell to individuals but this is only the beginning uh, and this way we can actually get people to know what Lockheed is about and then we can spread out. So your business model is to sell digital locks? Yes. How many digital locks are sold every year in Europe or the US? Um, well, how many, how many bicycle locks? Oh, there, there, there are lots of bicycle locks sold. For, so for every bicycle that gets sold, there is at least one lock being sold. And how many bicycles are being sold in Europe, every year? In Europe, there are 20 million new bikes getting sold every year in Europe alone. And that is only first-hand bikes. So that excludes second-hand bikes. And most people we've talked to who have a bike already would get such a lock, although they have a bike already. So it's very difficult to estimate. And there haven't been any digital locks sold so far. And it's, so. and it's also sort of unfair to choose one business model because our business model is integrated. So it's, it's all there already. So yeah. we can just click a button and it goes so online. So could, could you give away the lock and just money, make money on business model two or three? Well, we could talk about this later on. We, well, <laughs> but what we are eventually going you to always, do is... You always choose between scale or revenue, right? And early on, you have to make that decision. Yeah. Definitely. You know, are we willing to either make the lock so inexpensive that we can literally give it away, 50 of them to every hostel and, and make money on the platform? Or do we charge $69 or 100 uh, euros, whatever it is, uh, for the lock and then eventually layer this platform on top. I, I rarely see companies that start with one and succeed with the other. You, you start very early in the, in the cycle of your business, you have to decide. Absolutely. We're, we're, in fact, we will be retailing to B2B at a discounted price if they choose a certain type of subscription. So that ensures that we have recurring revenues and we know that they will be renting out the model. Um, so, sure. so what is 
what is the actual cost of this lock going to be? And where does that compare to normal locks? So are we talking about in the top 10% or is this like an average lock or where, how many do you think you can actually sell? Okay, so the, the lock right now on Kickstarter is retailing for 69 pounds, which is a very comparable to U-locks. You can actually get a U-lock for more than 69 pounds. So um, obviously this is a promotional rate and will increase slightly. We're trying to, as we go in, into development, we want to uh, not have to increase this and keep the, the, the price low, obviously. Uh, but as you said, if we can sell locks and add subscription services to them, then obviously we can, in a way, um, subsidize the actual device uh, and it gets paid over time with the subscription. Yeah. So how many locks in Europe today are sold for more than 69 pounds? I think that's difficult, uh, difficult to say because it wouldn't really, wouldn't really give a good estimation of how much we can sell. Um, Everybody we've talked to who we want, who we would retail the lock to for 99 pounds, in fact, outside again, everybody said, look, for 99 pounds, I get an internet connected, alarmed lock. And there are two types of customers. One, he has an expensive bike and he wants to secure it with an alarm lock. And the other customer, he has maybe not such an expensive bike, but he knows that the money he invests into security, he can earn back by renting out the bike. Next questions. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and your inspiration behind this? Yeah, sure. Uh, Daniel. Um, so I'm originally a, a medic, so I did medicine, and then I decided that uh, this was a bit more fun than medicine. Uh, but I've been a bicycle fanatic all my life. Um, I own quite a few bikes, actually, I have to accept. Um, but then I did biomedical engineering, and then I'm, I, I started my uh, PhD in engineering science. And I'm an economist. Um, I studied in Switzerland, and we both met at Oxford. I'm, I was a banker before, and in private equity, and, and we met there. So I'm the, econ the economist, and he's the engineer. So you can tell he's the CEO, I'm the CTO. What's the durability? How much have you tested sort of the ways to you know, break into this? Because that's the frustrating bit, right? Once yeah. Uh, durability. Yeah, we're still testing. Durability. So we'll continue testing and we're still making improvements to the casing. The main thing that we were doing improvements on is the casing. It's made of polycarbonate. It is extremely, it's industrial strength polycarbonate and it's the same material that's used for bulletproof glass. Uh, but in, we're not stopping there. We're trying to every time try to make it stronger and stronger. Uh, but we're very, very comfortable at, the, at the, the strength of it at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. Log Thank eight. Thanks.